Okay, for this chapter, we are talking about factors and multiples. And uh, for this video, part one of this video, we are actually talking about uh, factors. Okay, so um, what are factors? Factors are actually parts that make up a number. So if let's say I want to find the factors of 45, 1 and 45 are factors of 45. And uh, 3 multiplied by 15 give you 45. So 3 and 15 are actually factors of 45. Okay, so that just let me highlight it. So 3 and 15 are factors of 45. And uh, 1 and 45 are actually factors of 45. So it's uh, factors once again is parts when multiplied with each other give you a certain number. So um, using this example of 45, okay, uh, I cannot say that 2 plus 43 gives me 45. So 2 and 43 are factors. That concept is wrong. And uh, factors are only when they are multiplied and give you a certain number. So why do we need factors? And uh, one good example is when, for example, I have 45 boys and actually a big group of 60 girls. And if let's say I want to split the boys, okay, into groups such that there's such that there's no remainder, and I want to split the girls into groups such that there is no remainder either. Okay, so first condition is that no remainder. And uh, second condition is that if let's say I want no remainder and the number in each group is the same. Okay, what number should it be? Okay, so the number of boys in each group is the same such that there's no remainder. So, and uh, the number of girls in each group is the same and there's no remainder okay so um, what we can use is actually factors and uh, if let's say I choose a common factor of one okay uh, if you're confused not to worry just listen on okay after a while you you get the idea but uh, if let's say I choose a factor of one all the numbers I mean if I choose a factor of one and I choose one person in each group okay I can form 45 groups of boys Okay, and you find that uh, there's no remainder. And if let's say I form one group, sorry, if I form groups of ones for girls, you'll find that I have 60 groups and I have no remainders. Okay, so what other numbers can I use? Okay, uh, another, the next common factor we'll realize that uh, later when we solve for this is that you can actually have three, okay, yeah, as a common factor, which means that I can form groups of three, boys and I also can form groups of three girls and for boys okay I'll find that I'll have 15 groups of boys and for girls I have 20 groups of girls without any remainder and actually they both have a uh, like grouping of uh, three boys here and three girls here so both are equal because they are common factors okay um, what other numbers can I use okay uh, if you can guess is actually the other common factors of 45 and 6 like if let's say I form groups of 5 okay means 5 boys here and 5 girls here okay so I can form groups of 5 5 5 5 5 okay for girls I will end up with 12 groups for boys I'll end up with 9 groups okay something like that okay so um Back to the technique, how do I find out what are the common factors? How do I know like which group can I, I mean, how many members in each group can I form? Okay, uh, such that there is no remainder in each group. Okay, uh, for your information, this is actually extra material. Okay, and uh, you don't really have to, um, to know it. But I think it helps in understanding the concept of common factors. Okay, uh, how you can apply uh, the knowledge of common factors when you are actually uh, in a in a real life scenario, okay? But in an exam, they're not going to ask you this, okay? In an exam, what they are likely going to ask you is actually to find the factors of 45 and 65. So this is like an example, okay? So find the factors of 45 and 65. So I'm using the same numbers as before, just that, uh, you know, in an exam, they're more likely just going to ask you this, okay? And you just have to solve for this, it's fine, okay? So I'm just going to show you the steps 
that are used to actually give me this uh, working that you see here. Okay. Now, find the factors of 45 and 65. First thing you need to do is to make sure you have enough space on paper. As you can see, in a previous example, it can actually be quite long. So I suggest you start at the top of the paper and continue down. So you need 45 here and 65 okay, to leave. Uh, I mean, this is the space you need to write down the factors of 45. And this is the space you need to write down the factors of 65. Okay, so what do I start off with? I always start off with 1 and then I continue on 2, 3, 4, 5. This is like to test out. Okay, it's a bit like guess and check. Um, we have to go through all the numbers until we hit a certain point. And uh, we will see later on what is that certain point. Okay, so 1 multiplied by 45, we know gives us 45, right? Okay, so next. Uh, 2, does, uh, can I multiply it by anything to give me 45? Actually, no. Because uh, if I divide 45 uh, by 2, I actually get a remainder. So 2 is actually not a factor of 45. Alright? Uh, remember, there cannot be a remainder. Okay, if uh, let's say I'm finding factors. Now 3, can I multiply by something to give me 45? Actually, yes. So if I take 45 divided by 3, I actually get 1, 5. Okay, it's 15. So 3 times uh, multiply by 15 to give you 45. And uh, if you realize by now, actually your multiplication must be super strong. And uh, if it's not, you should really, really revise it multiple times. Make sure you know it in and out. If not, you are going to be very bad at this chapter. Okay, so for 45, 4 multiplied by what gives you 45? Um, you find that when you divide it, okay, uh, you're not going to get, I mean, you're going to get a remainder. So 4 is not a factor of 45. Next, I continue with 5. Okay. So 5 multiplied by what gives you 45? Okay, you actually find that 5 multiplied by 9 gives you uh, 45. Okay, and we continue down. 6 multiplied, does it, uh, if I divide 45 by 6, do I get something? No, I don't. Okay, I continue with 7. Uh, 7, uh, when I, I mean, some 7 multiplied by what gives you 45? You find that there's nothing. And 8, I continue. Is there anything? Nope. 9 multiplied by what gives you 45 you find that it's 5 but uh, when do you stop okay you actually find that when actually you repeat okay when you repeat numbers such as 5 and 9 okay you can see that 5 is a factor 9 is a factor there's no point writing uh, once again uh, I mean 9 once again and 5 because they are the same right they are the, essentially the same numbers so every time you see a repeat, there's no point continuing because you're going to hit the same numbers eventually. So you eventually hit 15 and you eventually 45. So there's no meaning. Okay, so once you see this, you cancel this. Okay, what you should do is to cancel this and you put a U. This is to remind you that once you have checked for 1, 3, 5 and so on, okay, you actually do a U-turn and come back here. Okay, so what are the factors of 45? You'll find that it's 1, 3, 5, 9, 15 and 45. So 45 has a uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, 6. 6 factors. As for 65, we do the same thing. So 1 multiplied by 65 gives you 65. 2 multiplied by what gives you 65? It doesn't because 65 divided by 2 gives you a remainder, so it doesn't. So 3, does it give you? No, it doesn't give you anything. 4, what do I get? Yes, 4 multiplied by 1 and no, it does not give you any factors, okay? So when you divide it out, you don't get anything. So 5, does it give you something? Yes. 3, 1, and 3, 13. Okay, so 6, does not, does it give you anything? No. 7, does it give you anything? No. 8, does it give you anything? No. 9? No. What about 10? No. 11? No. 12? Uh, 13, yes, multiply by 5 actually gives you back the same number and uh, you realize that this is a repeat so you cancel out and you do a U-turn. Oh, but wait, um, okay, the previous question was 60 while this was 65. Okay, I just realized this. So, um, but actually it doesn't matter because this question don't really link with, uh, you know, this previous one. But the process of finding the factors of 60 is actually still the same. You go through the same process, just that 60, you, as you can see, there are actually different factors, just that uh, there are more factors. So for 60, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 factors for 16. Whereas for 65, there's only 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 factors of 65. Okay, so um, the next thing that um, exam in the exam, what do they like to ask is actually what are the common factors of um, 45 and 65. You actually have to compare it side by side. So 1, is it a common factor? Yes. So I always choose 1 to compare with the other so that I don't get mixed up. I don't go to and fro, to and fro. I start from one end and uh, cross out to the other end. So 1 is a common factor. Usually it is. Okay, and uh, 3. Uh, is it a common factor? No, so I leave it. 5, is it a common factor? Yes, so I circle it. Okay, uh, then I continue. And 9, is it a common factor? No. 15, is, a co is it a common factor? No. 45, is it a common factor? No. Okay, so I can see that between 45 and 65, the common factors are 1 and 5. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the, the, the other type of question that I ask you. So the first type is to actually find the factors of 45 and 65. Um, the answer for this is actually list down everything that you see here. So uh, to answer this question, okay, I shall not confuse you. Part A, let's say for example, find the factors of 45 and 65. Uh, the answer is actually 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, 45, which is all the factors of 45. And uh, also 1, 5, 13, and 65. But when they ask you what are the common factors, okay, common, common factors of 45 and 65, then the answer becomes 1, 5, and that's it. Okay, so uh, these are the common questions that will come out. Okay, either you find, they ask you to list all the factors of 45, or list all the factors of 45 and 65, then that will be listing down. Or they will ask you uh, what are the common factors of 45 and 65, then you have to find the common ones. Okay, um, what are the common mistakes, uh, just to take note, is that usually people mix up between factors and multiples. Just take note for now, later I'll give you an example in the next few videos. But uh, this, okay, as long as you understand this concept, you should do fine, okay. So, uh, once again, to find the factors, remember, what you do is you start from 1, okay, and uh, you find the factors that actually make up the product. And uh, you lastly, you stop only when you repeat, and uh, to remind yourself, you just put a, a, a circle or like a U-turn kind of sign, okay, to uh, show that actually you're done, and uh, these are the factors that uh, you actually identify, okay, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. But uh, I'll just talk quickly about uh, some simple, uh, but uh, you know, questions that not likely to come in the exams. But I think it's uh, very simple to solve. So I'll just uh, take uh, maybe about uh, two minutes to quickly solve it. Okay, so not so common in exams because too simple. Something like find the missing factors. Okay, so if they give you the number of forty nine, what are the missing factors? So all you have to do is just to get forty nine divided by seven because seven multiplied by what gives you forty nine. Uh, the answer is quite obvious, actually 7. Okay, we can do this very quickly. So the factor they are looking for, the missing factor is actually 7. And for this, what's the missing factor? All I have to do is just 60 divided by 4, and I'll realize I have 1, 5. Okay, so 4 and 15 are factors of 60, so the missing one is actually 15. And lastly, circle the numbers that has 3 as a factor. Okay, so uh, which means um, what multiply by 3, you know, uh, gives you 4. Can anything multiplied by 3 give you 4? Obviously not. So this is not. Okay. So 7. Okay. Anything multiplied by 3 can give you 7? No. Okay. Anything multiplied by 3 to give you 9? Yes. So I circle it. Anything give you uh, multiplied by 3 gives you 12? Yes. Okay. And uh, 15. Okay. Uh, is 3 a factor of 15? Obviously because uh, right, 3 multiplied by 5 gives you 15. Okay, 3 multiplied by 4 gives you 12. And uh, 3 multiplied by 9, sorry, 3 multiplied by 3 gives you 9. So you can see that 3 is a factor, right? 3 is a factor of 15, 12, 